Hey guys, Susan Thomas here, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a soldered huggy pendant. So today I'm going to teach you guys a super simple soldering project. It's really great for beginners because there's not a lot involved other than soldering. And I call them huggy pendants. And the reason is because it actually kind of looks like, if you look at the back of my piece, that the guy's reaching around and hugging the stone that you're soldering. So nothing difficult about this, just wire and solder paste. Super easy. So uh, there's a lot of stuff in front of me. We do have a soldering kit online that I highly recommend that you guys pick up for this because it's got all the basic things that you need. And everything else I have um, are just kind of basic jewelry tools and basic metal smithing tools like hammers and files. And it looks like a lot, but I'll go through everything so you'll have everything you need. So if you have basic jewelry or metal smith tools at home, all you'll need is the soldering kit to get started with this. So let me just kind of start over here and then we'll kind of go across everything that we have. First of all, I have got um, right here on the side, this is called a pickle pot and it's got pickle inside. Here is the pickle. Everybody gets confused about pickle. I do have a video called Deep Pickle Dive that explains pickle. Essentially what it is, is just something that cleans the silver after you solder it. It gets a little oxidized and I always think of it as like a, um, Comet or Spick and Span, it cleans your silver for you, makes it shiny again. This is gonna be my sterling silver wire that we're gonna use. This is a 16 gauge wire. Now you can use different gauges depending on the size pendant that you're going to hug, but 16 gauge is a good average gauge. I've got my, my safety glasses, of course, those are gonna keep my eyes safe. Then like I said, I do have some basic jewelry tools. These are, are nothing special, just a flat nose plier, a flush cutter, which is very important, a chain nose plier. Both of those are flat on the inside. And then also you can either use a round nose plier or a bale shaping plier. I use that to make a, a jump ring. I may not need that, but I have it just in case. Then I've got just a little assortment of stones here. It helps if it's kind of a flattened or coin shaped stone. So you can kind of see this one right here. You can see how it's flat from the side. A rounded nugget's not going to work as well. So try to pick a piece that's got a nice broad surface area and is a little flatter. All right, so then I've got my fireproof surfaces. These are two soldering blocks and on top of the soldering blocks I have a piece of charcoal. Now, do we have to use charcoal? No, you do not have to use charcoal. You can use a soldering block. I like to use charcoal for this project because I'm actually soldering directly onto the flat surface and charcoal does not conduct heat, meaning it doesn't suck the heat away from my project. So it makes it easier to solder because I want the heat to go to the metal, not to my surface. Then I have got my solder pick and my solder. I'm using a number 65 solder paste. You can use other types of solder. I always do these beginner projects with solder paste, first of all, because we carry it, so I know you can get it. And second of all, because it, it, it actually is easier for beginners to work with. I love it for the huggy pendants because it almost works like a glue that holds all the piece together, pieces together for you while you're soldering. This is called a crosslock tweezer. And you can just take a look at this. You can see it's got those wood pieces right there. I like to use this when I'm soldering because you can pick up pieces and grab them even when they're hot and the, the heat won't conduct up there and burn your fingers. So good thing to have. Not a necessity, but very, very good to have. Then I've got a quench bowl. That makes sense, right? In case something gets too hot. That's why that's there. I do have a bench block and a chasing hammer just in case I need to hammer anything. And uh, then some files. This is my flat file. And I don't know that I'll use that today, but I might. And then this is going to be a wire rounder. And I will use that because the arms and legs come around. And I'm basically making prongs, like you think of a prong for a ring. And you don't want them to be rough and you will be cutting them with a flush cutter. So you wanna use the wire rounder to make them nice and smooth before you go around your piece. And then finally, we're getting into the good stuff over here. This is going to be my torch. I will show you how that works in just a second. That is going to be hot enough to mount the sterling silver, also included in the kit that we are linking to. This is a um, basically a soldering flux that keeps your silver clean and also helps the solder flow. Now, you do not have to have this with this type of solder because this type of solder includes flux within it. I like to have it anyway. Um, it keeps your metal clean and I personally always solder with an additional flux. 
And people get confused about flux too. I should probably do a video on that. But I always, if you look at flux and you think flow, flux equals flow. No flux, your solder won't flow and it will not hold your piece together. So it's very important. Whether it's in your solder or you're putting it on the solder, you have to have it to solder. You don't have any flux, you cannot solder. So this is very important stuff. And then for the torch, this is just my um, butane that you put inside the torch. There's a little spot on the bottom and this opens up. You can get this at any hardware store. Has that little pin on it. You put it into the bottom of the torch, press, and it fills your torch up with butane. Just like a lighter, same thing, super, super easy. And finally, goodness gracious, there's a lot of tools here today. This is a copper tong. That is to take things out of your pickle. Over here on the other side, you never wanna put steel into the pickle. You always wanna use a copper tong. And then I've got a little steel wool here to help me clean up my silver after I'm done. So, that was a lot. I hope you guys are ready to get started. All right, so this is gonna be so much fun. I have got a number of different pieces here that I could do this with. I wanna use something big, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this large piece of Labradorite, because I think it's awesome. Any one of those would be perfect for this project. So what I do need is this piece, because the actual piece, and I'll show you the back of my Huggy Pendant again, the actual piece, this little form part, the body part, that part is essentially just formed to the shape of whatever bead you use. So in this case, I've got kind of an ovally shaped bead, so I'm gonna make an oval shaped piece to put behind there, and that's gonna be the body of my Huggy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of 16 gauge wire, um, you do not have to cut it off. If you don't want to, you can work right from your spool if you wanna save your wire. I'm gonna cut it off just cause it'll be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So I'll just trim off. I'm just gonna take about five inches of this. And this can be done very simply with your fingers or you can use you know, a, a shaping plier like this one. So what I'm gonna try to do is just form it to the shape of my pendant like that. So let's kind of get that guy just a little bit more. And then I'm using my fingers to bring it around. Remember, this is going to be on the back, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But um, it's just kind of up to you how much of a perfectionist you are and how close you want to get it to the shape. All right, so see kind of what I've done so far. So this top part, I want to go in a, to a pretty good curve. So I'm going to take a bale shaping plier here and just kind of bring that around into a nice tight little curve there. So see, I'm, I'm essentially just forming a shape. That's all I'm doing. Nothing hard, just kind of making it work for my pendant. And this part just all depends on the shape of your pendant. So let's see, if you turn it over, then it doesn't work. There we go. So see what I've done? Just kind of made a nice little shape to fit my pendant. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this off right here using my flush cutter. Now, important part of soldering is flush cutting because those two pieces right there have to be soldered together. If for some reason I leave that little gap right there and start heating it and try to soldering it, solder it, then it's gonna be very difficult for me to solder. So I wanna make sure that my two pieces of metal but right up together, just like this. So if I leave space like that, the solder won't fill that join because solder follows heat. And so if I leave space like this, that's gonna be like a cold spot. Think of it like a cold breeze coming through the two joins of your solder. So the flatter they are, the closer you can get them together and the more likely you're gonna be successful soldering. So what I've done is I've flush cut those. If you don't have a great flush cutter at home and you do have a file, you can actually offset these and just use a little bit of a file just to flatten it out a little bit better. The closer they are, the tighter the join, the easier it is to solder. So once I get this set up, I'm just kind of fixing that little guy so that those joins come right together, like so. So see, you almost can't even see it. All right, so I'm gonna take this little permanent marker and I'm just gonna mark that just so I don't lose it because it helps me. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of make sure that I'm happy with how this is coming onto my pendant. 
All right, so I, I'm just testing right now. Once I get this soldered, I'm probably gonna just flatten up that top just a little bit, just so it's a little bit flatter on the bottom and top, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I've got my joint perfect. I do have a little jump ring here. This one is a pre-soldered jump ring. You can see kind of what's coming together here. That's gonna be his head. That's gonna be his body. We haven't made any arms and legs yet. <laughs> okay. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna solder that joint. So you're gonna do your very first solder joint. You can do them all at the same time. I find for beginners it's better to do them separately. So this is my solder paste. It does have a lid on it. And what I'm gonna do is unscrew the lid. This is one of the things that people often will tell me, my solder paste doesn't work, or there's no solder in it or something like that. And it's always because they didn't take the lid off. So here's the lid. We're gonna take that lid off and then I'm gonna squeeze just a little bit of it down here in the corner of my little block here, my soldering block, and put that to the side. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually flux this entire piece and then I'm gonna put some of that solder there and show you guys how to solder it. So let's bring out our torch and talk about the torch really quick. This is gonna be your soldering torch. It does have to be a certain type of torch. You're not gonna be able to go out and get your creme brulee torch and make this work because silver has the highest melting point of any metal. You need a good hot torch. I believe it has to be something over 1152 odd degrees and don't quote me on that, but it does have to be hot. So basically this torch is made especially for this type of soldering. There's a little safety right here on the back. You pull that down, you press this button, torch comes on. Now, if I let go of that button, torch goes off. So there is a continuous flame button. It's right here. What you wanna do is pull down, turn it on, and then pull back the continuous flame right there, and that will keep it going. Now, right here on the side, this is your up and down. So if you want more heat, you go forward. If you want less heat, you go back. So that's the torch. So let me move my little head out of the way, and we're just gonna focus right now on that little join. So first step, Turn your torch on. So I'm just gonna grab that, turn it on, pull back the continuous flame, and I'm gonna push it up to the highest heat. So you can see that little V shape right there. That V, the tip of that V is gonna be the hottest part of your flame. And uh, if you try to work all the way back at the back of your flame, it's not gonna be hot enough, you're not gonna solder. If you work too far away from the tip, it's also not gonna be hot enough, it's not gonna solder. So those are things that if you're not successful to think about next time you move forward. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pre-flux my piece, turn it on like this, continuous flame. Here's my flux. I love this flux because it's a spray flux. Move my Labrador right out of the way. So I'm just gonna start heating this and uh, I'm just gonna spray it with my flux. And what I'm looking for is for it to look kind of almost like powdered sugar is all over my piece. And once it looks like that, then I'll be happy. And you can see the, um, that's perfect. All right, you can actually see the powdered sugar on the little charcoal block better than you can on my silver. But still, my joint, is, my joint still looks good. I'm just gonna move that around just a little bit. Everybody looks good and it's ready to go with solder. So. I always get a little bit of solder paste onto my solder pick to start with. Solder picks are essentially just a tool to pick up solder. That is all, it's, that's why it's called a solder pick. It picks up your solder. So I'm just gonna pull this back, turn my torch back on, and I'm gonna start heating this. And you can see it's already pretty hot because it's turning red, and so I'm not gonna have to do a lot of heating. But I'm going all the way around the whole piece, and then I'm gonna put my solder in place, hold it in place, and then you actually saw it flow. That's it. That's all you have to do. It actually, when it flows, it actually turns kind of liquidy and silver looking, and then it's done. And uh, that was actually a pretty good, that was pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick that up. Now this is what I'm gonna use my cross lock tweezer just because I know this is hot. I'm gonna quench it so that I can touch it. Never pick it up with your human fingers. <laughs> or your human tweezers as they call them. All right, so now I'm testing, I'm looking, I'm saying is this, do I like the shape of this piece? And I kind of do. Um, I think I'm gonna just give it just a little bit of a flattened spot at the top here, just for my, for his head. Just kind of give him just a little bit more space. Cause I like 
the uh, jump ring at the top to sit just behind. I don't know, I like the look of that. You guys can do it however you want, but I like to put my, my jump ring just a little bit behind the back of the piece. So we'll test them again, take a look at it. And that looks, that looks fantastic to me. Let's see. I think that's gonna be the front, so that's gonna be the back. Yeah, so that's awesome. So now, I'm gonna put that down. You can see this is a little bit yellow. That is essentially um, what we call a fire scale on the piece. That will be cleaned off in the pickle, but I'm just going to um, show you that and show you what's next, and then I'll stick that in the pickle. So you can, you can see that my little head right there, that first piece, it's already been pickled, so it's clean. Now this piece has not been pickled, so it is not clean. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna put it in the pickle. The brass brush is a great way to, to scrub off the rest of whatever the fire scale is that's on your piece after you're done and you just kind of take it and bring it like that. It polishes it up, takes off all the rest of the fire scale. Generally don't use it until after it comes out of the pickle though. So see, that just kind of made it shiny again. All right, so we are now working on, on arms and legs for our Huggy Pendant. Isn't that kind of a good way to, to kind of describe it? It's like hugging your bead. I think it's cool. Or hugging your stone. All right, so I'm gonna make, I've already cut a couple arms here and I'm making them extra long. Now, am I gonna need this much? No, I'm not. But I always, I'm, I'm like, for the very first time you do this, if you make them too short, you can't actually hug your pendant. So you need to make sure you make them long enough. So I'm making mine about an inch long. All right, so I'm gonna make two more and I am flush cutting both ends of this. So I've got an arm, I've got a leg. I'm gonna cut one more piece. So I flush cut this end. I always put my finger over the end so I don't lose that little piece of silver. Put it off to the side and then do the other side right there. Make them about an inch long. Now both sides are flush cut. And I'm also gonna take my flat file just as a precaution and just kind of flatten those out a little bit. So leg, leg, it's kind of, it looks like a little spider right now. All right, so there we go. That's where, about where I want them to be. Let me straighten this guy out a little bit. Now, one thing that's cool about this project is right now, this is kind of a half hard wire, which will be a little bit difficult to pull around the pendant, but as you heat metal, it softens up. So um, when I'm heating this, these arms and legs are gonna get a little softer. So I will be able to pull them around the pendant easily. All right, so let's see how our piece in the pickle is doing. Oh yeah, look at that. Let me show you guys. Look how shiny that is. Kind of amazing, right? So, and that pickle is warm, but it is not hot. It's in a little pickle pot, which is like a tiny mini crock pot. And uh, it just kind of keeps everything warm for you. I don't always use a heated pickle pot. Sometimes I, I just don't, but um, it definitely works better if you do. It's just faster. What we're gonna do is just use, see, I'm, this is a little brass brush, just shines it back up and now it's perfectly clean. There's my old solder joint right there. If I was in my studio, would I probably uh, take a, some sort of file and file that down a little bit? I probably would, um, but I'm not gonna worry about it today. It's, if this is your very first solder piece, I don't want you to get worried about the joints having any lumps or bumps or anything like that. What I want you to do is actually learn to solder. All right, so let's make sure that we're going the right direction here with our piece. See, I knew I would do that. Just like that, perfect. All right, so pop him back on here, like so. And then that's how that's gonna go, just like that. We're gonna solder the head and the two arms on at the same time. And I'm gonna try not to have to flex in between, but like I said, if the piece gets too dirty, we are gonna have to flex in between. So what I like to do is use my solder paste to kind of stick everybody together. So I take a little bit of solder paste, don't use too much, and just pop that guy right there, like so. And then get this other guy, get a little bit of solder paste on him, and pop him into place. That's probably a little much. I always say more is more, but, but more is too much sometimes. On solder paste, you don't need a ton. Um, but if it's, like I said, if it's your very first project, it's, uh, I would err on the side of using just a little bit more than too little. 
you will get a little bit of a lump. You'll have what I call a little, a little solder bump. Um, but like I said, this is gonna be on the back of the Huggy pendant. Nobody's gonna see it. You can polish it up and nobody will ever notice. So I never ever want you guys to feel like there's anything wrong with your very first or your very your, or your first few pieces. And like I said, this is the cabin in the woods. This is not the chalet. So it can be a little bit rustic. We'll hammer it a little bit. It's gonna look awesome. I tend to get to, uh, to be a little bit of a perfectionist after a while, but on something like this, you just, you just can't be a perfectionist. All right. So see his little head and his arms are kind of stuck in place with a solder paste. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool because it's called solder paste. I know it doesn't really glue things together, but there you go. All right, so you guys kind of already know the ropes on soldering. You know, we're gonna heat the piece, we're gonna flux it, and then we're going to heat it again to get that stuff to flow. So just kind of give it a little bit of heat, not a ton, we're just gonna give it a little flux. Like so, I'm not gonna go quite as crazy and get all that other stuff because I don't want my solder to flow until I'm ready. So now that I'm ready, and I know I've got all the flux in place, I'm just gonna start heating. And what you're looking for is for that solder to just flow. And so I'm gonna stop right here, and then here, and then here. And I'm looking for it to get kind of shiny. Remember, you're looking for that solder to flow from one join to the other. That one was perfect, that one was perfect. This one is being a pain. Oh, there it goes, see it went? Oh, I did so good, I'm so happy. That was amazing, all right. That is perfect. It is very hot, so I'm gonna pick it up and it sometimes has a tendency to stick. Let's just get this little guy right here. There he goes. And then we're just gonna quench it so I can touch it and show you guys what happened. So there's my little guy. I'll put it in my hand so you can see. He now has two arms and a head. He's just amazing. Um, and uh, you can see I've got a little charcoal right there. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do my next join without pickling this. Uh, we'll see. If there's any problems, then you guys will learn something about not pickling and why you need to do it. Because like I said, solder does not like dirt. So now we're going to stick the legs on. And see, you can see he's not perfect. And, and you know what, my stone's not perfect either. I usually recommend using the cabin in the woods, the rustic stones for this type of stuff too. So it's very clear that you didn't mean to make it perfect. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of solder paste. What was like enough solder paste to solder an entire barn together, but we're just gonna get a little bit on there. Like I said, pop you right there. And then get a little bit more for this other side. And pop that right. I'm trying to go below the solder joint on the side there. And I see my solder is getting a little liquidy there, and that could end up being a problem. Because, and that's that's because my um, charcoal block is a little bit hot. So that's something else to keep in mind. I'm just going to put just a little bit out more right there because I think it's just going to end up sinking into my charcoal block as opposed to doing what I want it to do, which is solder my piece. Sometimes your solder place paste will flame up when you first hit it with the heat. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that organic material burning off. Don't let it scare you when that happens. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just the solder paste doing what solder paste does. All right, so I'm happy with where my legs are. The hand, the arms are already in place. And uh, as long as you don't concentrate the heat on the arms and the head, that will not come unsoldered. So you're good. So turn the torch on, heat it just a little bit. Give yourself some flux. And uh, this is gonna heat up pretty quick because it's already a little bit warm. So just kind of start heating and then, like I said, concentrate on the place where you want it to solder. So right there, you're looking for it to kind of flow. That one just did. It just gets kind of silvery when it flows. And then that one just did as well. Perfection. Get everybody gone. Ta -da. I think soldering is so satisfying. I love it when it does that silvery flow thing. And the fact that you can make things stick together like this, I just think it's fun. And uh, I remember when I first started making jewelry, all I ever wanted to do was learn how to solder. 
And I think a lot of us, as we're trying to come to the next level with jewelry making, that's what we want to do is, is learn how to solder because it makes you feel more like a metalsmith or a, um, you know, a silversmith or just a real jeweler. All right, so there's my little guy. I'm not gonna get too close to that bench block or that, uh, sorry, that charcoal block because it is hot. And you can see I've got, I made, it seems a little lumpy right there. Um, Cause I put maybe just a little bit more solder paste than I would have liked. Like I said, if you are experienced, if you have a Dremel, you can go back in and kind of um, either file or just kind of file that down right there. Um, but once I get this in the pickle and clean it off and hammer it, it's really not gonna be that noticeable. When I'm in my studio and I'm not having to keep my head out of the camera and I can get right in and do what I wanna do, I'm a little bit more careful about those type of things, but I always say that when I'm doing these videos, um, make sure you get it soldered because that's the most important part. <laughs> and if you do use a little bit too much, you can, you know, you can fix it. And if it's your very first time, and you got it soldered, you are doing fantastic right now. <laughs> this is all pickled and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of my pickle pot with my copper tongs, not any other tongs. And of course, it doesn't wanna come out right now. There we go. There's my little guy, my little huggy. And I'm just gonna clean, I'm just drying it off. That's all this is, the regular old paper towel. Just drying him off. And then I'm gonna get my brass brush and just Polish that off. And you can see even where I had like a little bit of a solder blobs, I call them solder blobs. It's not too bad. It's really not gonna be noticeable. And of course, this is the back of the piece too. Okay, so that is how my little guy's gonna sit. You can see it's just perfect. And so when I turn this over, that's gonna be the front of my pendant. And you can see there's his little head right there. And uh, here are his arms and legs and they're gonna fold up over and around that piece, just like so. So, take a look at that. And what I'm gonna do now is, while I'm holding it in place like this, like I said, this is a real, real simple kind of rudimentary type style thing. You're just gonna pull up one arm and then you're gonna pull up the other arm. And because I've softened this wire with the uh, torch, it actually just really, really easily bends up and around. Just kind of pull it up and over like so. So it actually is kind of almost holding him in place right now. And you can look at it now if you're not quite happy, just kind of move things around a little bit at this point and get them to where you want them. But you can see why I call it a huggy pendant because it clearly looks like he's hugging the pendant. All right, so that is ready to go. And now you just have to decide the length of your prongs. And uh, for me, I'm gonna want this to come up and over the edge of that lip, so an inch, maybe about an eighth of an inch in. So I'm just gonna push that over like that. And I'm going to clip one of them because I want it to go right about there. And use your flush cutter to do this, like so. So that is how I want it to go. Now. You can get really, really perfectionist-y on me on this, okay? You can take one prong, go like that, and then you can measure all, you can make them straight again, measure every single one with your ruler, and make it absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna bend the prongs over, all of them, and then I'm gonna clip them, I'm gonna eyeball it. So I'm just gonna bring it over this right here, because there's, there's really no way to make this exactly perfect, because obviously I've got a um, imperfect stone as well. So then I'm just gonna grab this one and you just wanna make sure it comes up and over the lip of the stone. The most important part of this project is making sure that your stone is held into the piece so that when you're walking around with your beautiful piece of labradorite and your huggy pendant, it doesn't actually fall out of the pendant. All right, so I'm just gonna clip that one as well. And now what I do as I look and say, mm, I wish this prong was down a little bit lower. You know, I wish it was up a little higher. I wish this one was a little shorter. So I'm just kind of looking and seeing if there's anything I wanna change. I go forward. Like this one looks a little bit shorter to me. I don't know that it actually is, but I'm just gonna clip this one a little bit shorter so it's more symmetrical looking. And that one looks a little long to me, so I'm gonna clip him a little bit shorter too. 
Now, this is definitely not ready to be finished because all these little prongs are super, super sharp. So I'm gonna use my chain nose or my flat nose plier just to kind of pull these prongs up. I'm gonna go with the flat nose because it doesn't mar your wire as much. Just gonna pull them up. And I'm not gonna pull them all the way up. I'm just pulling them up just enough so I can get my pendant back out. Like so. And then just bring this little guy back out. Just make sure you leave him upside right so that you know what direction he was in there because I have done that before and popped him back in the wrong way and then closed it up and been like, why does my pendant look funny? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, this is um, kind of like a cup burr, which is a jeweler's tool, but it's called a wire rounder and it's electric. Kind of a neat little tool. If you look at the tip of this, there's, there's basically almost like a little file on the inside of that little cup. And what that does is it rounds out the ends of your prongs. Most important part of setting a stone is gonna be the tip of your prong because if it sticks up too much or if it's rough, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna catch on things. Like if it's a ring on your finger, it'll catch in your hair. If it's on a pendant on your necklace and it's longer, it's gonna catch on your sweater and pull your shirt or something like that. So you wanna make sure you get these really, really smooth. If you don't have a cut burr or a wire rounder, you can do this with a flat file. Not as easy, but you can do it that way. So I usually leave the ends of mine on my huggy pendants just rounded. All right, so there he is. Everybody is smooth and ready to go. We're just gonna take this little guy and pop him back in there like so. And now the last step is just to kind of press your prongs down. I generally like to get just a little bit of a curve in my prong um, so that, that that rounded part, almost like if you look at my fingers, see how they're kind of curved in, almost like the rounded part touches the top of the pendant as opposed to being flat on top of the pendant. It just makes it less likely that you're gonna have troubles with it um, catching on something. So I'm gonna take my little round nose plier and before I press these down, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a curve in my prong, just like so a little bit more of a curve there in my prong. So just kind of bring it in, give it a little curve like so, and one more like so. And now I'm actually just gonna take my flat nose plier and press down my prongs. So press them in and down, press him in and down, and press him in and down. And uh, then just kind of, Generally speaking, I just kind of take this and just press. It just takes a little bit of itching, I call it. I'm just gonna take this and just pull it in and over and squeeze and then grab this, pull it in and over and squeeze. What I'm doing is essentially tightening up the prongs and just feel your pendant. Make sure, see how it, see that look? I mean, he's not moving at all. And you can look at the back and see that everything's touching and look, it looks like he's hugging it, doesn't it? It's so cute. And so basically, that little guy's done. If I'm not happy, like this prong's a little low, or if I wanna move things around a little bit, I can do that now. Um, but I'm probably just gonna let this be a little bit more organic. There you go, there's a little huggy pendant, and you can now just take a little open sterling silver jump ring and uh, put that on there and attach it to a chain like the one I have here. You can add it to a strand of beads if you want to. Um, just Sky's the limit, whatever you guys want to do. That's how you make a huggy pendant. So let me go through all your tools again, just so everybody knows what's going on here. This is your pickle pot, which is like a tiny crock pot, which inside I put your pickle. This is the copper tongue, which is the only thing you should ever grab anything out of your pickle pot with. Then I have my torch, which we talked about during the video. This is hot enough to solder sterling silver. Then you also have your spray flux, which is what makes your solder flow. And um, this is your just your butane to put on the inside of your torch. Sterling silver is what we use today. This is a 16 gauge sterling silver wire and that's what made the huggy setting for your pendant. And then as far as your basic tools, I did use my flat nose plier. I used my flush cutter and I used my chain nose plier. And while I was shaping that little pendant piece, I did use my bail shaping plier as well. Solder pick, which is what you use to pick up your solder. We had the cross lock tweezer, which is what you use to keep yourself from burning your human tweezers. And uh, then we had a number 65 soft solder paste, 
which already has flux inside of it. I've got two solder blocks and also a charcoal block that I used to solder on top of. Those are fireproof surfaces. And then we just had a little pendant piece. I've just got some different assortments here. And I remember I told you that it's important that it has a nice flat front surface, but also that it has a thin or, or not a, a wide um, width on it as well. Additionally, I've got a quench pot here. This is just a, a little bottom of a flower dish that I use that I put water in. It's non-flammable and it keeps the water cool so I can just quench my silver while it's hot so I don't burn myself. And uh, I brought this in late. This is going to be your brass brush, which you use to help you clean the silver after you take it out of the pickle. This is our flat file, which we use to file down some of the ends of our metal. And this is going to be the wire rounder that I use to round the prongs. And I did use my permanent marker once, I believe, and this is some steel wool, just also another cleaning or polishing tool to polish your silver. And that's pretty much everything that you need to do this project, except for my safety glasses, which seem to have disappeared. I don't know what I did with them, but please always use safety glasses when soldering. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies like the ones I worked with today, check out the links down below. What other soldering projects would you like to see me do? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and I'll see you again next time.